Perfect, thank you. Um, as introduced, um, this is Tiger Nunum here with Axelink. Um, just for you, um, uh, for those who do not know about Axelink, uh, we are a uh, manufacturer of different products uh, re around optics. We have telecom products to uh, de uh, datacom products. But today, for, to focus on the AI applications, uh, we're one of the manufacturers of the optical transceivers. So the, um, I'd like to touch base on where the technologies and the um, markets are trending around 1.6T, uh, based on two to four uh, gigabit per lane uh, technologies. And the, um, I'm sharing a little bit of the data from our products as well. So on the left-hand side, um, this is the forecast chart um, from Omniva, um, Omdia, um, that's, um, that, uh, breaking down the, uh, the quantity by a different form factor and also different uh, um, bandwidths. Um, you can see um, the yellow color. Uh, this is the 1.60 OSFP XD. Um, that's uh, starting to ship. Uh, I probably see a little bit of um, the shipment in this year and exponentially increasing the amount of um, the volume towards 2020, uh, 2030. And uh, it, it's uh, stated in, uh, in this report XD, but I was um, chatting with this um, author, Lisa Hoff, um, uh, and confirming that this, uh, major some of, or majority of this, um, uh, the share, uh, for 1.60 XD can be regular OSFP based on 224, uh, but the, um, uh, there's no standards uh, published to support 224 per lane. So that's uh, one of the reasons why she uh, didn't mention about uh, 224 technology uh, specifically here. So uh, what I wanted to say here is that the um, lots of um, uh, demand for 1.6T and a 224 might be uh, one of the key roles for um, expanding the AI um, uh, solutions. And on the right-hand side, this is the, um, the forecast of the data center power demand. Um, and you can, you can see US AI and the rest of the AI started increasing uh, like this year or maybe uh, last year. Um, so one of the key technologies uh, that we need to focus on is to how to maintain lower power consumption uh, so that um, the operating cost at the data center wouldn't be too much uh, affected. So uh, a couple of uh, takeaways is that the uh, AI machine learning growth uh, is um, uh, triggering the higher bandwidth products, uh, including two to four per lane. Uh, that's going to be really critical, and uh, greater energy efficiency is really essential um, to manage the, uh, the power demand increase. And I think you've seen lots of different forms, but this is one of the examples of the, how the uh, AI cluster architecture is addressed. Um, of course, um, I think you, you, you all, most of, uh, most of you have heard about Jensen on the key, um, differentiation of scale up and scale out. Um, but the, um, I think optics obviously is critical for the scaling out uh, applications that requires longer reach uh, support. Where scale up, uh, I think uh, Roy and a few others uh, in yesterday's presentation mentioned about uh, the scale up still uh, requires some optics uh, to um, tackle the copper reach limits. Uh, so um, I think um, supporting all of, all of the applications within this AI cluster architecture with optics is uh, also an uh, important factor. And then where the standardization is, uh, this is the chart from Ethernet Alliance. Um, and the, I marked here, this is a uh, 224 per lane um, area. Uh, single speed uh, here to up to quad or maybe higher parallel speeds uh, to support the 1.6T. So um, this is like one of the examples. Uh, IPEC is also working on, on the module level, but the IEEE uh, 802.3DJ group is working on the standardization of 2 to 4 per lane. And hopefully within the next uh, one or two years, uh, we'll see the published 
uh, standardization, but the, everybody's um, working on uh, standardizing 224 per lane yet. However, at OFC this year, uh, a few weeks ago, um, we've seen a lot of um, demonstrations at the module level and system level on the 1.60 optical transceivers and the system. So um, this is rapidly uh, evolving and also moving on for the commercialization. Um, so we will be expecting to see 224 per lane products relatively quicker than what you think uh, or what you thought in the past. And then the other perspective of the standardization, but the OSFP uh, published a new revision uh, also a few weeks ago. Um, this is a new addition of the cage design, um, two by one cage. Uh, on the right hand side, this is the legacy two by one cage. The, what's new here is uh, it's a two piece design to, uh, so that you can accommodate the heat pipe uh, to cool down the, um, the transceiver directly. Uh, it's really uh, driven by the um, power consumption and also the heat generated by the optical transceiver. Um, now, lots of system companies are uh, concerned about use of only air cooling for module as well. So this, um, uh, the cage uh, option was added to this revision uh, to uh, allow the uh, system companies to um, uh, flexibly choose the direct cooling Option, direct leakage cooling option for transceiver as well. And uh, for just for the clarification, this is also available for regular OSFB uh, in the legacy way we were saying the uh, integrated heat sink option as well as uh, writing heat sink option. Uh, the difference between the two is that the uh, one regular OSFB has the, the heat sink uh, uh, integrated on top of the module where writing HESIC is the, um, uh, without the HESIC. But long story short, um, the OSFP uh, MSA added this um, direct attach uh, liquid cooling option for uh, module level as well. So um, this is how uh, the system uh, level in, um, power uh, consumption or the energy efficiency is being addressed by the standard body. So a little bit of the technology trend, uh, linear pluggable optics. I think um, I, I have uh, the session in the afternoon elaborating on energy efficiency. And also the speaker after me, Michael from uh, CIG, is elaborating on this technology, LPO. So I, I'll be going quick. But the, um, uh, traditionally, we had the retimer embedded CDR or DSP uh, to retime, and uh, um, which was uh, consuming a lot of power, especially for 800 gig and beyond products, uh, roughly about 40% of the module power consumption. And the linear pluggable optics, or AKA LPO, is the, uh, the solution removing DSP out of the transceiver uh, so that we can uh, relatively uh, reduce the power consumption. So we, we can expect 40% of the um, uh, reduction. And another technology uh, common here is the LRO or TRO, um, depending on uh, the markets. Um, but the, um, the LRO is the hybrid of between the two above. Um, uh, there's only T DSP function, retiming function at the TX on uh, TX side. So receive, it, receive side is uh, uh, linear. So this is also um, addressing uh, the power consumption reduction uh, need in the market. So I'm comparing the maximum power consumption, taking an example of our 1.60 OSFP224 2 by DR4. Uh, on the farthest left, that's a DSP using uh, 5 nanometer DSP, and then second one is 3 nanometer DSP here. Um, with, within the different technologies of DSP, you can see uh, like four watts um, reduction, and uh, you can see the pico joule a bit on the, the, this line. Uh, pretty good reduction. So that, uh, even with the DSP, uh, with the fully retimed option, we can expect uh, uh, choosing the right um, technology to uh, expect some lower power consumption at the module level. And the LRO and LPO is obviously significant reduction of the power consumption which is like almost half or less than the half of what uh, uh, five nanometer DSP can do. 
So uh, key takeaways would be like a three nanometer DSP offering the solid power saving uh, co compared to five nanometer. Uh, so the, we can expect the uh, performance read time function uh, almost the same as five nanometer while we can get some power reduction. And then L LRO, LPO further reduces power. Um, ideal for energy efficient application in, such as AI as well. So uh, just a note, three nanometer DSP is relatively new. So um, uh, sharing where the technology is right now. Um, so this is a chart, um, Y is the um, OMA and uh, X uh, is a TDEQ. Um, so plotting it and I have a spec line uh, here. Um, and the, uh, the orange data is five nanometer um, the three nanometer is blue. Um, like you can see a little um, better performance with five nanometer because it, it's a little mature uh, technology and the um, three nanometer is actually catching up. So we, we are working with the DSP vendors to get fine tuned uh, to perform uh, performance to be equivalent. And this is the BER of our uh, 224 products. Um, based on this is three nanometer DSP, um, which is pretty showing a solid product. I'm the um, solid data. And uh, this is the uh, pre preliminary uh, testing uh, we've done with the LRO, uh, communicated with DSP version. So we, we get in data from DSP to LRO and measuring BER. Um, Eight lanes, every, everything was within uh, one to E, e minus uh, four. Uh, you, you can see E minus eight at the worst one here. Uh, long story short, uh, LRO is really um, promising technology in terms of the uh, addressing the uh, power hungry application like a, uh, AI uh, to further reduce the uh, power consumption while performance is still um, pretty good at the uh, this preliminary testing setup. And last, I'm uh, sharing what uh, we've done for showcasing different reaches. We had the multi-mode optics, uh, two by VR4, uh, which ex we can expect um, 30 to 50 meet, uh, meter range, and also two kilometer optics, two by FR4. Um, so we, we don't know how the copper limits being uh, taken at the AI for the next few years, but do we, as Accelink and also other transceiver manufacturers are uh, getting ready for uh, covering different needs for the reaches. And uh, the data here is preliminary, but they are pretty good results are showing. And conclude my presentation, I think we don't have much time for some, uh, the Q&A, so um, I skipped the, my summary slide. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Tiger. Do you have any questions from the audience? Hmm. Okay, so what do you think is going to be more successful in the market? The LRO or the complete linear? LRO or LPO? Yeah. Or I think it, it, it depends on how the modules are uh, used in the system and also um, longer ch channel compliancy. Obviously easier to use L LPO for um, like short channel, um, but if the end user can manipulate the use of LPO uh, to only use in the shorter channels, that's easier to adopt. But the, um, I think the industry is still validating L LPO for two to four, including the high, uh, um, high high loss channels as well. So th there's a possibility that uh, we can overcome high, high channel uh, concern uh, working with the system companies as well. Yeah. Oh, there's one question. There's a lot of work that's going on at uh, 200 gig per lane, LPO, LRO, uh, but initially, there was some expectation it would play a big role with 100 gig per lane. Do you see any activity among your customers to go back and redesign their systems to use LPO 
in their 100 gig per lane or are they looking at it exclusively as a 200 gig per lane technology? Thank you very much. Um, I think Michael may be touching base on it, but the, um, I do have a specific presentation in the afternoon focused on 112 uh, for LPO and LRO. That's why I excluded it from my presentation not to duplicate. But so that, that probably answered your question. Thank you.